I think I first talked to you on the shuttle. Yeah. Which sounds so innocent and cute. But we had a class together. I thought you were really cute. And I feel like I asked you there if、um, you wanted to be my girlfriend. Kind of experiencing what it's like to be a couple. Hi everyone, it's Helen and Mel here. And today we have a very unique episode for you. Something that we talk about often on our podcast is our experiences with love and dating. And as many of you know, dating is not easy. Having a boyfriend or girlfriend or a significant other can be one of the most challenging dynamics to navigate. And while some connections hold strong and end in a beautiful lifetime together, a lot of these connections fizzle out. In episode 85, we each wrote a letter to our exes. It was the first time we got that open and vulnerable with one of our past relationships on this podcast.、Mm-hmm. And so many of you enjoyed hearing our letters, especially the idea that opening old wounds and memories can actually be a healing process if approached with gratitude in mind.、Mm-hmm. Today, our girl Janet is taking this action one step further. She agreed to have an actual conversation with an ex. His name is Wesley Chan. We call him Wes, and their relationship was a meaningful one, though short lived. He's also one of the co founders of Wampa Productions and a good friend of ours. This will also be the first time that they reflect back on their college relationship together. The first time in 17、Oof. years. That's all we'll say for now. But we hope you enjoy this chat between two good friends, once lovers. I feel a little bit nervous.、Um, I think what we're going to talk about is a very long time ago for me. So, in preparation, I tried to kind of like rethink and.、Uh, Go back to some of those times. I don't know if I'm going to learn anything new today that I didn't know before, so that's a little nerve wracking now that we're older and we've also been through a lot of other relationships. Maybe we have new things to take away.、Um, I'm, I'm nervous. I, I'm nervous, but this has been on the table for a long time. There's not a lot of people that have、uh, sustained a relationship like Janet and I,、um, so I, I'm grateful enough if I. Can share a little bit of, about it in a positive light, then why not? Hi. Hi.、Um, so, this is maybe for context for people watching. Like, we obviously are friends, so、mm-hmm. it's not like I haven't seen you in 17 years. I see you very、no. often. You、yeah. see me very often.、Mm-hmm. Um, but we haven't really like, talked about、mm-hmm. like, our period of dating in college.、Yeah. That was a really long time ago. We <laughs> share something really special, I think.、Yeah. Like, we do have a deep friendship. The one, that one time period, we don't really. Go back to not because we don't like it or anything, it's just it was long ago. and We kind of closed the book on it in order to build a different type of bound, like foundation of a friendship, right? Yeah, I, think. I mean, I would hope so. Do you remember how we first met? My memory is very spotty, like some things are、yeah. very clear, and, and I'm ashamed to say some things are, are very blank. So we, we met on, the sh- on UCSD shuttle. Right? Yeah. Is that what you remember? I mean, my mind precedes that a little bit because I. Because I pursued. Because you stalked me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I first talked to you on the shuttle. Yeah. Which sounds so innocent and cute. But we had a class together. Well,、like、it was like two to three hundred? Three hundred at least. Three hundred people. Yeah. One of the bigger lecture halls.、Mm-hmm. You always sat in the same place. And I always sat in the same place. And, you know, you were in my eye line and I, I thought you were really cute. So, you know, we were in the same class, and you know, I see you every day. <laughs> and this is like crazy to you because you don't. You, I didn't know. You had no idea. I always sat in the center, in the middle.、Um, yeah. I was like super hyper focused on the, on the teacher and the lecturer. And I was、uh, always on the right side, all the way to the side, so that I could like do this and fall asleep. <laughs> the, our first interaction was、um, it was coincidental, right? Because I was riding the shuttle with my roommate. And then the, there was no one else on the shuttle. And then on the next stop, you got on. You asked me how I did on the final. Oh, worst line ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think the time that we started hanging out together in person was when school restarted. It was also, so it was your first relationship. It was my first time dating someone where like, I had my own space and、mm-hmm. you had your own space.、Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of this like, kind of experiencing what it's like to be a couple and like to cook dinner together、mm-hmm. and then to like sleep in the same bed together and things、mm-hmm. like that. And I think one night you'd walk down the street every time to get to class and at night this light post would just cast this one like cone of light. And I feel like I asked you there if、um, you wanted to be my girlfriend. I think. But. Is it sad that I don't remember? No, because it's, <laughs> it's not because. I'm not sure either. And、yeah. it's, it's sad because those moments you would expect to remember, to be right? Remote, yeah. Remember when I brought you boba? Yes, actually, so, that was that's one of my the, favorite memories. That's, that's probably like 
my earliest clear memory. So before the school year ended, but I was out with my friends getting boba and I think I told you, I was like, hey, are you, are you at your apartment? I want to drop something off. And I show up and I was super nervous, but then that escalated like a hundred times more because when I walked in, you're like with all your I was in a study group. <laughs> a study group. I would literally walk in and there's like a crowd of people yeah, in, the, yeah. in the lobby. And I was like, you got your boba. And then when you left, all my room was like, oh my god, it was me! Yeah, it was, it was Boba Boy after that. That's right, you right. had the nickname of Boba Boy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it wasn't a big deal, I feel like, you know, the fact that we were a couple. And I think, I mean, I, I wish I made it a bigger deal. It, because it was my first, I, was, I, I don't know if I made you feel special enough. I was just kind of going about life normally, but with you yeah. at, at certain moments. Like I remember you came to meet my parents. Um, yeah. So it still felt there were like the formalities that right. you did, and we had we had like a, a Valentine's Day dinner where I remember you had like a really big final project due, and I was like we can do it another night, um, but you were like no let's go. So we went to get sushi in like downtown La Jolla. Yeah. Um, so I yeah I didn't I didn't feel that way, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I was always second guessing because it was my first one. Like if you were doing things. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think there was there was definitely an insecurity because uh, because you had been in one already, and uh, I was constantly trying to like not make myself think about like you know what she expects based on that. And, mm. uh, you were a dancer. I mean, you're you still are a dancer, a very good dancer. Used to be. <laughs> no, 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 no. She downplays it. Okay. <laughs> You're on the dance team, and then I became friend, friends with the people on the dance team. And you know, every time I saw you, I was like, "Wow, like that's my girlfriend." Like, um, <laughs> but there was an immense sense of like pride that I never felt before because I'd never been in a relationship where you could be proud of someone um, in, in that way. Yeah. And every time you know you have performances, I, I'd be the one shooting it. I'd be the, yeah. the camera guy. So we were getting closer and closer. But looking back, uh, I was either very cautious or nervous or just like held back from any, from like a lot of showing affection. Mm. You know, we feel like we kind of jumped into this romantic dynamic where it was like following the butterflies in our stomach and everything and then not really getting to know each other as people. Yeah. So, and then we became like girlfriend and boyfriend based off of kind of just those butterflies. Yeah. And I think that's kind of why ultimately we felt like we hit a point where once we started getting to know each other as people, like we weren't sure if we were the most like compatible, I guess, mm -hmm. or like something kind of fizzled. Yeah, right. Um, like the dust settles, the butterflies mm -hmm. settle, and they land, the butterflies yeah. land, and then you you reevaluate what the relationship is. When the butterflies settle, it doesn't mean you're less attracted. Um, it just means you actually have a better idea of what is what you need mm -hmm. and what the other person needs. Right. I think. But at the same time, I couldn't fight this feeling of um, something was changing, yeah. or 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 maybe something wasn't progressing in a way that I thought, and I was probably scared to even bring it up. Another big indicator of my not readiness and immaturity at the time, coming to terms with realizing I had remaining feelings for someone. And I couldn't admit that they were all gone. And it was on a trip, and it was not something I'm proud of um, at all. The situation is you're in a relationship, but you can't admit that you're you're totally platonic with this other person. Right, right. But it's not like I cheated. It's not like right. I... When I met you, I wasn't thinking about another person. Right. I, I was all in with you. Yeah. I, I also remember that when we met... Because uh, we talked openly about our past relationships mm -hmm. and stuff. And I knew about this other person that you had feelings for. And you had mentioned like a huge reason why you were like really pushing yourself to take action with me is because you didn't want to relive a situation where like you miss an opportunity, right? Or like it's the importance of being able to express your feelings and to act on them. I let myself down because I thought I was past that. You can't control how you feel, right? You can't control if you have feelings for someone or if, you, if your feelings for someone change or end. Um, well, you can't control what you do. You shouldn't have had to experience that in that way on a, on a trip. And yeah, I feel very disappointed. Uh, I can still remember that feeling. 
like on my end, I would much rather my partner admit it mm -hmm. and like talk through or like address what they're feeling than to not, right? Because yeah. I think that does a lot more damage. As we adjust, we're already kind of like, we couldn't figure out why things weren't really like yeah. driving because we were having conversations like about this even before the trip, I remember. Yeah, and I, th I think the trip was something that we both thought, oh, this would be good, change of scenery. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess it was a change. <laughs> <laughs> it was a change. <laughs> Situations that feel emotionally heavy, I'm always like, it's okay, it's okay, because I don't like anyone feeling pain, right? Mm. But what I've learned now, being a little older and also going through other type of emotional situations, like that's not really healthy. Like I should let myself feel things, mm. right? And I knew that you were, did not do anything malicious, and that in fact you were very judging yourself for for, for mm. that situation. There was nothing you could have done action wise differently, right? Um, and so I would say I do want to be able to admit that it did hurt me um, and that I should have been okay with admitting it to you. I didn't want to, I didn't want to like overburden you because I knew you already felt bad. So I said it was okay. But the truth is it, it didn't feel okay no. at the time. Us ending was very separate from any feelings you might have with that person because like our our dynamic not working out mm -hmm. was like that situation was completely right. separate. I was like us, we've kind of concluded we don't really work as a as mm -hmm. a couple, right? And I remember telling you like I want you to not think that you ended this because you had feelings for someone else. That it ended because we didn't we realized we didn't. Well, basically, what I'm saying, I feel like there was a point where I did understand. It, it was very clear to me that I had hurt you. Don't think that that went over my head back yeah, then. Yeah, I knew, I knew it didn't. Um, I, um, I definitely knew uh, that I had made a mistake and I had hurt you. So, and then you know, and that's the shame. Being able to face the reality of your feelings changing and someone else's feelings for you changing is, is a big thing you have to deal with. Yeah. So, but I do remember the conversation we had when we when you started to realize and process like what you were feeling on the stairs and that was in the stairwell was yeah. that at your brother's apartment? it was outside my brother's apartment it was outside your brother's apartment so my memory from the staircase i remember the fluorescent lighting that we both hate mm -hmm. the white i think that everything was like kind of white gray uh, which <laughs> <laughs> uh, like i remember crying but i also remember you crying and that was something that in hindsight now, like having had other challenging uh, conversations about relationships that I do appreciate because it, to me, it's a signal that you were deeply impacted and you were moved, um, A, by what we shared. Um, and then when you were saying you reacted with guilt, it means that you felt like a huge sense of like respect and responsibility to even to have that react that way, right? About something that you didn't even do, but just that you were feeling. It hurt to let you down uh, and let myself down. The relationship was a way for us to get to know each other as friends. And we kind of worked backwards. Uh, yeah. We said, let's go out instead of saying, hey, let's be friends first. It's kind of like we ended it and we're like, all right, let's actually do the thing that we should have done first. We should getting like, to know getting each other. Getting to know each other. Yeah. I'm really, really grateful for what we have now. I don't want to say smooth transition into friendship, but it kind of just happened. Just happened. I think we got to know each other and then it took a, cause it was like over the summer we got You're to right. know each other. Yeah. And then we started dating during the school year and then we went on that trip during the winter and then we broke up. It was short. And then we had, I don't know, maybe a couple more months of school and then the summer vacation. So there was like kind of naturally built into the academic year a time mm -hmm. apart. And then by the time we came back, it's like, it's been a while and mm -hmm. we naturally had similar friends who so we were already kind of together. Yeah. Um, and, and because it was smooth, kind of confirmed uh, what we thought, which is like, we can still have a friendship. Yeah. And probably yeah. work better as friends. Almost like, let's, let's start over uh, with this new context. Um, yeah. And I think because of the nature of our personalities being more like, like, I don't like having beef with anyone mm -hmm. and I don't think you do I love either. Beef. <laughs> If there's the opportunity to always be in each other's circles, we would rather it be like a positive, um, amiable relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of a little bit of personality and a little bit of like circumstance. Yeah. I mean, Janet, you're still really attractive. But that's not all that matters. That is, that is all that matters. Because we've gotten to know each other better, we know what's better for ourselves. 
especially now that we're even older and like I am at a place in my life where I know I'm looking for like a permanent partner. Yep. And so it's like, if we already established that or like that we work really well as friends and mm -hmm. then this partner is not super ideal or whatever, mm -hmm. um, then well, thank you for joining me for this conversation today, Wes. Well, it takes two to convo. <laughs> so thank you for being the other side of it. Yeah, and thank you I, to Melon and Elle for instigating this. This conversation, we would not have naturally come together to do this. I, I feel, I mean, I feel like we have leveled up our friendship in, in revisiting the past. Yeah. Um, and like I keep saying, not a lot of people have a chance to do that in, in, a, in a positive way. Yeah. So I, I feel really lucky. Same. Thank you. Thank you. How many times can we say thank, thank you? you. <laughs>